So I have a little playground here of different shapes and lines and such in Vasari to uh, do a little illustration of how point normals work. Now, a normal is, just for the sake of definition, a perpendicular vector from any particular spot on a line or a surface or an object. So I can show you one really nice quick way that you can illustrate point normals with a curtain panel. So if I go into my family and make a new curtain panel pattern based, and I've got my basic curtain panel here, I can take a point and I can set the work plane of this guy right here. So now I'm going to put a point on that work plane, and I'm going to offset this point from it, which means that this point is moving straight up from the work plane of this guy. And I'm just going to connect it with a line like so. And if I load this into my project, I can take that and I can pattern this surface with it, say. I'll divide and family 2. And what we're going to see are point normals. So if I look at this guy, actually it might help if I just make this a little bit more low res and uh, turn on some surfaces here. So right now what I've got is I've got this sort of porcupine-y looking thing. And I'll just turn that around. And each one of these lines is coming out perpendicular to the surface anywhere where it stands. And you can kind of inspect your surface and see how it sticks up in different angles. Like so. And just to make it a little bit more graphic, let's uh, change this up a little bit. I'm just going to make this surface show. I'm going to show the original surface and my components. And I'm going to isolate that just for a second so we can take a closer look. So there we go. Every one of those guys is sticking up perpendicular to the surface where it's hosted. Now I've also got some other tools that I've been using to interrogate all sorts of other surfaces to just take a look at how their normals can be represented and how their normals can sort of be revealed. So I've got this guy here, my diagnostic tripod. And what it is, let me close out this guy, is this adaptive component. It's got one point, and like I was showing before with that curtain panel, I've hosted a point on top of a horizontal work plane here of this guy, so it's always going up. But I've also done the same thing on these two other work planes, the two horizontal work, uh, the two vertical work planes, sort of X, Y, and Z are all represented here. So the Z, that sort of straight up and down line, is red. And then I've got my, my X and my Y represented here with the yellow and the blue. So what this will allow me to do now is sort of see at any point where I place it what the point normals are doing. So if I go back over here and I can take that diagnostic tripod and I can pull it out into my project environment and I'm going to put it on level one and it's going to do some predictable stuff. I've got red sticking up, I've got yellow, uh, green and blue sticking off to the side as they did in the project. Now if I go over here and I host it on my surface. I'm just going to take my diagnostic tripod here and I'm going to put it on this surface and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Now the first thing that you might think was, well, why is it pointing in that direction? You know, clearly this is my up surface here, right? Well, in fact, Vasari and Revit have no idea which way is out and which way is up. This is a surface. You know, if you went and selected this surface, you could go and stretch this in, and now you would say, oh, well, no, that's clearly my, my up and out. So you're th sort of throwing the cards up in the air when you make a surface as far as which is up and which is down. But now that you have it out here, you can sort of read which way the surface is pointing. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how you can manipulate that. So if I take this guy and I stretch him around on my surface, I'm going to make copies of it. 
and I'm going to move them around a little bit, you can see how the point normal moves around on the surface, right? And you can see how the tangency works with this line as well. If I take it all the way down here, and I look at it, I not only have a perpendicular line, but I also have a tangency line from my x and my from my x and my uh, my x and my y coordinates, I guess is what that would be. So that's all sort of still seeming sensible. Now, if I take this guy and I place it on an edge like that, you're going to see some different behavior. So here I've got two of the same family that are ostensibly looks like they're sort of hosted on the same thing. This one is hosted on the surface and so the normal plane is pointing out from the surface. This one is hosted on the line and so you're going to get very different behavior because what it is doing is it's coming out at a point of tangency with that line. You can do the same thing over here on this edge. If I take that same guy and I put it over here, you know, my red line almost disappears because it is in line with that edge. And you can see similar behavior if you go over here and take a look at how it hosts on just a regular line element. It's going to do the same thing. And another way to think about this is if you take your point element and you place a point there. Oops, I'm just going to thin line so you can see things. If I select that point and I turn on here over here it says show reference planes. If I say show reference planes always, I'm going to see the reference planes for that point. And you see how this is basically in my loaded family over back in this guy. If I look at it and edit it, this horizontal work plane here is equivalent to the horizontal to the work plane that you're seeing here. You see how the red line is going out. Now, you know, and you can just keep sort of throwing these families down on all sorts of other lines and seeing how they behave. Here I've got a spline. I can drag this around and you can see that that red line, that vertical Z plane or Z line is tracing a tangency condition along this curve all the way up. You can see how if you place it on a line like this, as we saw before, you get one set of behaviors. Interestingly, if you place it on a line by points, you get a little bit different behavior. So this guy is on a line by points, and you can see that while the red line, the perpendicular line, is consistent, you're kind of again throwing your cards up in the air as far as which way your X and your Y are going to be oriented. And I kind of think of this as like putting a Cheerio on a piece of spaghetti. It's like the thing can spin and spin and spin but still be in the same place. And then if you take it you can drop it down here on this line and see how it moves around if you've got a curved spline by points, how it'll move with it. And again, you know, this is just to sort of interrogate your geometry to see what your predictable behavior should be with these surfaces. Um, again, we were talking about how um, over here on this guy that it's not always evident which way is going to be out. If I take this guy and I stretch it back in like this, you know, you'll see everything point what you might consider to be inside because Revit doesn't really have a way of understanding what's inside or outside on surfaces. Well, if I go over here, I've got two arcs that are drawn and they each have a point hosted at the same place on them. So this point is hosted at point two of this line, which means that the line started here and ended here. When I drew it, I went center, start, end. And over here, this is also at, you know, something low. So, which means that I started here and I went in this direction. And what that's going to mean is that when I create forms from these guys, their surface orientation is going to be different. You know, ostensibly I'm just taking arcs on both of them and making surfaces, but they're both going to be pointing in different directions. And we can see that here. If I place a point on each one of them, one will point in one direction and one will point the other. Because again, they're surfaces. Revit doesn't, and Vasari doesn't really know which way is inside or which way is out. This is different than solids. If I go in and I take this guy 
and I'm going to make a solid piece of geometry out of it. I'm just going to take a line and go like so, so that when I revolve it I'll have a solid. And similarly I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make this guy a solid. And what we'll see with this is that now Vasari has enough information to make an accurate determination about what's outside and what's inside because I'm going to make a solid. So that guy's going to go like that, and this guy's going to go like that. And again, same direction that I drew those lines as before, but now I'm making a solid. So now there's enough information to say I know what's inside and now I know what's outside and can be consistent about it.